Hello. So, yeah. Come, fang an. Oh, Today sorry. we met again <laughs> to test some new prototypes <coughs> and cleaners and uh, since we work on car every day and receive all kinds of cars with all kinds of issues and problems, most of the time we try to solve it by regular chemical cleaning and in some cases we see that the problems are very stubborn. So in this case, in a lot of times you would need polishing, but since polishing requires a lot of time, it takes off some of the clear coat, we were looking for more convenient and easy solutions and we came up with the idea to combine the mechanical cleaning properties of a polish with the chemical cleaning properties of a cleaner and we came up with this kind of cleaners. So you have two different types with different powders inside. For stubborn problems like um, oxidized headlights, bug and insect marks that are still there after washing and cleaning, um, yellowed rims, interior problems, for example, <coughs> Uh, sunscreen oil or something like that on the, on the leather which leaves nasty marks that cannot really be removed so we tested these cleaners in all these cases and we're gonna show everybody how the results are and how they work and then since it's uh, from my perspective a completely new approach and we keep finding applications for it it would be interesting to hear if someone can think of even more applications um, if someone wants to test it at this early stage, you're always welcome to uh, come here and look at problems together with us. Um, we will probably show it also at Automechanica in Frankfurt, so if you happen to be there, you can take a look at it. Um, there is two more applications that we saw already where it works. For example, um, to refresh PPF, it actually works quite well, so we will see on the car because it has uh, partial um, PPF and also with uh, matte surfaces. This is not like a final product at this point, we're still in the testing phase, so um, you will actually see a little bit of the process, you know, like Andrea said, so the idea basically was, or the idea came when we saw the first time the yellowing on the wheels and usually this is something you can only remove with strong acid which is something we don't use so that was sort of because that's etching yeah, basically yeah, so you etch yeah. the dirt away but yeah. instead of etching it we would really like to remove it not to etch it so we have more control about the process yeah so i guess uh, seeing is believing so we'll show it in a couple of uh, spots and then it would be great if you would uh, comment what you think of the idea, what you think of the applications, um, if you think it could be applied to uh, other situations. So it's basically, I guess, it's not something you would use every day and nothing you would no. necessarily use all the time. It's more like a last resort type of cleaner where usually you would I don't need know. polishing. Yeah, probably need polishing or extremely strong chemicals. Um, we will also, we won't do it today, but we will also test it, for example, on anodized metal parts, aluminum parts, things like that. Because what I saw or what we saw so far is that, from my understanding, it's designed in a way where it's abrasive when it comes to, let's say, contamination but it's not abrasive enough to actually cut the paint in the way we're using it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Another good thing about this, it's gonna be pictogram free. Yeah. So it's very safe yeah. to use for you, for the environment. Yeah. And it delivers nice results on the car. So this is what we're gonna show you now. So we will use it by hand, yes. not by machine. I guess you could also use it by machine or with yeah. a sponge, but we'll just take um, a regular microfiber so that the tool doesn't generate any abrasion so that we can actually see what the product does rather than what maybe a pad or any kind of tool would do. Okay, so like uh, Andrea said, we have two different grades. This is actually the... The finest one and this is more yeah. coarse one. Yeah. So we'll try both and see which so is we'll, working best exactly. in which conditions. So maybe we start with the finer one and then yeah. See if it's uh, if it's actually working. So maybe we start with the headlights, and then uh, yeah.
application was the, I guess, oxidation you saw on the, um, let's call it eyebrows of the, of the uh, headlights. And um, it definitely removed, I guess, most of it. You could probably go on and continue, um, but to refresh it, it definitely did work only with the microfiber, only with the product. So from my perspective, it works the way we expected it to work. There's also, you can tell when you use it, there's this combination of chemical cleaning together with the little bit of abrasion and combined, it really makes a big difference. So um, as you can see in the close-ups, um, it worked very quickly, so it was a matter of maybe, I don't know, one minute. Yep. Um, also here, I don't know if it, if it can be seen in the video, but a, there's a bit of a gray film that was all over the uh, headlight and that was removed as well. Um, keep in mind, in Germany we're not allowed to do uh, headlight uh, sanding and headlight restoration so it's not supposed to substitute any kind of headlight uh, restoration this was just an example of one possible application for the product um, what we were using was the stronger product and um, yeah worked uh, pretty well if you like, let us know if uh, this is something where you would think it's efficient or if you think it's, uh, I don't unnecessary. know. Unnecessary. Yeah, unnecessary, useless, whatever. I think it actually did the job it was supposed to do. Um, I was actually surprised because I think the combination of the chemical and mechanical cleaning, at least this is my impression, tends to have like synergistic effects. Yeah. So it, they just both each other up so I'm I'm quite happy yeah. with the result. It's very interesting using it and there's this feeling that impulsively you think oh this cannot clean because it's a liquid and uh, it's very difficult to put a finger on it like but you can tell and you can see and you can feel how it's actually cleaning. So um, next up I would show on the yellow staining of a, of a wheel, also in close-up. Bear in mind, like all the parts that we do now were cleaned beforehand. So this is the condition where chemical cleaning basically it has its boundaries. Yeah. Had no more effect. So as you can see, the wheel on the outside it's pretty much clean, but on the inside, after years of not being cleaned inside, you have this typical yellow staining that you see a lot. And um, yeah, we'll see. I mean, in this case, we know what we can do, usually maybe the light version and then the strong version, yeah. just to see um, the difference between how, far, how far each of them will go. So uh, yeah. So as you can see in the videos, when I was cleaning it, the lighter version, which was here, did the job. I mean, I think it was okay, but then the stronger one definitely removed everything. Uh, I'm not sure how 
detailed you can see in the close-ups, but there were small tar spots that would also go away, even though it's not a dedicated tar remover. Um, it removed pretty much, uh, yeah, everything you saw of the like yellowish baked in um, dirt and um, yeah I guess the result speaks for itself. This was the initial the first application yeah. we were looking at so obviously in this case I knew it's going to work but uh, it would still be very interesting to know how you actually judge this result and um, if this is something you need you think is needed in general and um, yeah how you like the process uh, one thing that was very clear to see in this case is one if you're using a microfiber once it's uh, saturated with dirt it just stops working so you will need to swap sides over and over and over again once they picked up a lot of dirt and then yeah it works very good so second application that i personally tried was burned in uh, insects where actually for the last i don't know 23 years um, i dealt with uh, detailing i never really saw anything other than polishing them keeping in mind the car was washed with pre-wash, shampoo, so regular hand wash, and this is the remains that you still see after this. I'm sure if you have insects in your area, you know, you know what it looks issue. like and how it happens, especially on dark cars. Um, if you have insect splatter and it's outside in the sun, this inevitably happens a lot. So in this case, we have it on the uh, headlight, on PPF and also on paint. So um, it works on all three of them. Actually, I used it the first time on this car, so I realized, okay, it actually works on PPF. And since the PPF on this was two years old, it had a bit of a gray haze in it already, and it actually did also refresh the PPF. So this might be another potentially big kind of this. application because it's usually not possible or at least not easy to uh, polish PPF. And if you do, you remove a lot of the top coat, which is basically the gateway for a lot of other problems. With this, we're relatively sure it doesn't remove the top coat. We will need to test it a little bit further when it comes to that. But um, yeah, in principle, again, the same idea as before. You'll see what it does, how it does it. Uh, please ask any questions you might have at this point. Let us know what you think, where it could work as well. And um, yeah, so... Uh, like I said, seeing is believing. A lot of people that we showed it here actually first didn't think it would be possible, but um, you'll see. up you will see how quickly it goes away and what's interesting in this case is it actually works very well without pressure with, well with very little pressure so you don't need to push like uh, yeah you just make sure you go in different directions yeah with the scrubbing so a little bit just like the polishing technique where you cover all directions yeah. so I will do it on the headlight too basically the same thing yeah but sort of, I mean, it's obviously, it's, it's, it's not as bad as oxidation on headlights, so uh, it'll be easy.
One of the questions we already had was whether this will remove scratches. I think if you scrub long enough, you will remove scratches, but I would not uh, advise anybody to try it this way. This is just for issues like this, in case you have light scratches or whatever, I would just go to polishing, establish technique, get the job done. This is more for like other issues. Yeah. And from my perspective, it's actually good that it's not cutting the paint. Yeah. Because you can always be sure that it's not going to... Um, not leaving any marks, yeah. anything. No holograms, no nothing. You can use it, you can rub as hard as you want. It's not going to, uh, to damage anything, especially if you have black trim. Um, like I said, one, one application I saw where I tried it and it worked was high gloss black trim on the outside and it worked perfectly fine without causing hologramming or uh, small scratches. So, um, yeah, so you saw the basic applications we had in mind up until now. Maybe we will find a couple more. Um, if we get to find a car with some nasty staining on the interior, we will also maybe do a video on that. Um, maybe you can think of some other stains you find, yeah, you find on the interior that you usually can't remove. Or different areas of application for yeah. the product. Or the car. And um, yeah. Let us know what you think of what you saw so far. And um, yeah, it would be great help for us in the development process of this uh, new type of product. Thank yeah. you for watching. Uh, please uh, like the video if you liked it. Um, subscribe to the channel. Subscribe to the channel if you like the video. <laughs> or and the buy videos. the products if yeah. you like us. <laughs> And um, yeah, I hope uh, to see you for another episode when it comes to this, where we can maybe show the actually um, the fine-tuned versions. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Thank, Thank you for you very watching. Much.